Hello everyone, welcome to part two of the Big Actuary Q&A. Today I'm sharing all the details of my job that I've never shared before. Quick intro for those who aren't aware, I'm Paige, I'm two years into my graduate job, I'm working in the insurance industry as a student actuary, and I think that's all you need to know. First few questions are actually about my colleagues. Someone asked, what are your colleagues like? My colleagues are pretty cool. Hi colleagues if you're watching. My old employer hired a lot of university graduates every year and then trained them up. So it meant I was working alongside lots of other young people in their 20s. So that was pretty good for the social scene and having things in common. At my new job, I'm still getting to know my new colleagues, but they've all been really welcoming. I work with people of all ages in their 30s, 40s, 50s. I enjoy working with people who I can have a laugh with. And I definitely had that both at my old company and at my new company I think as well I think I've got some banter going with some of my new colleagues so yes actuaries are great and do not deserve the reputation that they're antisocial and don't talk to anyone it's not true next question do you be constantly comparing yourself with other trainee actuaries a little bit I think it's also partly due to the fact that I've been in the industry longer I've done two years now I'm thinking about promotion and progression prospects and you are in competition with people who started at the same time as you and it's actually really hard to judge how your skill set compares to peers because I don't really work directly with student actuaries who started at the same time as me I'm normally working with student actuaries who have a few more years experience than me or a few less years experience than me. So I really have no idea how I'm doing, but I like to think that I'm doing okay. The effort has definitely been there on my part. How would you say your tasks differ from those of the more senior colleagues in your team? I mean, senior colleagues just tell me what to do. <laughs> They'll spend time getting involved in all of the projects and overseeing everything and do the final reviewing and sign off rather than being involved in all of the day-to-day -day analysis. I guess while the rest of us are doing all the manual data processing tasks, they might be out there pitching to clients and making sales. They'll have some management stuff to do, maybe a little bit of focus on strategy. Different senior colleagues have different specialities. And I guess it's just a reflection of how they've molded their careers. Next question is, do you go to lunch with your colleagues? Yes, I do. At my new job, I usually go out for a walk and go by lunch with other people in the office on that day. And then we all come back and sit in the shared kitchen space. The next few questions are kind of juicy, actually. Starting off with, what don't you like about your job? I think the thing I dislike the most is that it makes me feel a little bit stuck or trapped. A Monday to Friday nine to five structure is great for keeping leisure and work separate, but it does mean that I can't travel far away, especially if I'm expected to be in the office regularly. I get five weeks paid leave per year, but I can't take off more than a fortnight at a time. And that can sometimes feel quite limiting. There's a lot less flexibility than being a student or being self-employed. And this is all obviously the case with any nine to five job, not just actuarial work. Welcome to working life page, you know. And I've got used to it. I'm not complaining. It's the way things work. I get paid well. But I think that's the one thing I dislike most about full time working for a big company. Someone asked, is this your dream job? This isn't the job that I dreamed of having growing up. I always fancied myself as an author or I went through a phase of wanting to work for NASA before I realized you have to be American to work for NASA, who knew? These days, I don't think I have a dream job. If you had to push me for something I think I might enjoy the most, maybe something media focused, possibly film or theater or presenting. And then if we want to get completely unrealistic, imagine if I had acting, singing and dancing skills, I would crush a West End lead role. I also sometimes dream of playing clarinet in a professional orchestra or concert band or in the pit band for a show. I probably should practice more often than once in every six months if I really wanna take that route seriously, but yeah. Back to reality, I'm still figuring out what my life priorities are. And I'd say that my actuarial job ticks a lot of boxes relating to salary, job security, travel opportunities, technical work, work-life balance. So whilst I wouldn't classify it as a dream job, I'm really quite content with it. Someone else asked, do you see yourself doing this for the rest of your life? 
No, I don't see myself doing my current role for the rest of my life, but that would never happen because I would naturally progress. I'd get more involved with sales and management. But if we're looking at whether I want to be an actuary for the rest of my life, the answer is I still don't know. And when I tell people that I'm not sure if I do want to be an actuary, they look at me like I'm crazy because I'm spending four to five years of my life sitting these exams. I think I'm just curious about other career paths. There's so many options out there and unfortunately it's not possible to try all of them. As I said, I'm content with my current career, with my current trajectory. I do appreciate and like my actuarial job, but I want to remain open-minded. Cool, next few questions are about working hours and salary. First question, how many hours do you usually work? And do you sometimes work overtime? So everyone in the team does seven hours per day minimum. That's what we're contracted for, but I'll often work longer than this. The number of hours you work can vary with the time of year and whether it's a busy season. Also your appetite for work and aptitude for making poor life decisions. At a consultancy, you get staffed on a lot of different projects and it's the individual's responsibility to block out and plan your own time and make sure you don't overcommit to too many projects. It was only recently that I realized the importance of setting your own boundaries. You don't really get taught this or told this when you start out and it's very easy to get swept up into working crazy long hours because stuff always inevitably happens. You block your time perfectly and then there's some sort of delay with data arriving and suddenly things that weren't meant to clash just clash and you need 14 hours in a day rather than seven hours in a day and you just don't have that time. And to be honest with you, I have had days where I've worked until 11 p.m. or midnight. I've had days where I've started work at 5 a.m. If I could go back in time, I'd tell myself that you need to speak up and ask if deadlines can be shifted. Ask if there are extra hands that can be pulled in to help with getting it turned around faster. It is difficult because in general insurance consulting in particular, it's an area of actuarial work which is known for having slightly longer hours sometimes. And the pay does reflect that. The salary is good, even though we don't get paid overtime. So I don't mind working a long day on the odd occasion, but I'm now being quite strict with myself on what my default working pattern should be. And that's no more than eight hours per day. Work-life balance has actually been quite good at my new job so far. Particularly on office days, I get in at 8.45 and I leave at 5.15 and that's dictated by train times and I'm sticking with that and if I do need to work longer hours, it will be on days I'm working from home and don't have a long commute. Next question, how much do you earn? I discussed this in one of my recent videos. It was my new job video. My salary does increase every time I pass an exam. In my opinion, it's a well-paying career. I quite regularly see job adverts for senior actuaries, which are 140,000 pounds or more. This is per year, by the way. And I hear that chief actuaries or partners can earn over 200,000 pounds and also generally have a much better work-life balance than other lucrative career paths like bankers. So if you care about salary and you care about work-life balance, I'd say the actuarial path is a pretty good one. Final question on this topic, is do you think about work issues after working hours? And this one made me laugh because yes, all the time. It's hard to switch off and I do get invested in projects. I'll be in the shower just pondering whether our methodology takes account of X, Y, and Z. And I guess we just spend so much time working. 35 hours per week minimum, usually more like 40 hours per week. So it does just consume your life. When I am thinking of those issues outside of working hours though, it's often when I'm genuinely quite interested in what the outcome is going to be. I'm quite enjoying the puzzle at that stage, so I wouldn't necessarily say it's a bad thing or that I resent that. What do you do to prevent procrastinating at work? I like to schedule regular check-in calls with colleagues. They hold me to account and it means I need to make some progress with the work before the call. I've realised that I procrastinate most when I'm either working solo or when the deadline feels really far away, so there's just no sense of urgency. I try and combat that 
that by setting intermediate mini deadlines. I also have a rolling to-do list on a sticky note that is on my desktop screen and it's just a good prompt to actually get going. Someone else has asked what are the pros and cons of consultancy slash industry. For background, actuaries working in general insurance like myself can either choose to work at a consultancy and consult lots of insurers or work for an insurer's in-house actuarial team. I'll caveat here that I've only ever worked for a consultancy and I'm sure I'm generalizing a little bit, but from my viewpoint, I think working at a consultancy gets you more breadth and more variety in work and also more progression opportunities. Sometimes in in-house teams, if there's someone at the level above you and they don't go anywhere or don't progress or don't move anywhere, then there's nowhere for you to move up into. Whereas at consultancies, the teams tend to be a bit more larger, a bit more flexible. They might have a rolling intake of graduates. And so there's that natural early career progression there. On the flip side, in an in-house team, I've heard there is better work-life balance in general than at a consultancy. You do have busy periods, but you know when to expect them and they're only kind of one off every quarter, say, if you're working in reserving. And I've also got the impression from when I was talking to recruiters that in-house teams have better salaries than consultancies pay. Next question, how do you get used to office culture? I've currently started a new office job and I'm anxious. It did take me a while to fully relax in the office and realize that colleagues are just normal people. I had in my head that everyone acts professional and serious the whole time. But once I started joining group coffee breaks and stopping to chat to people at their desks when they had a spare moment, the office vibe actually became quite nice. And that was one of my favorite parts of my graduate job, the office vibe. In my new job, obviously there's been a new team and a new culture to adapt to. I've been making an initial effort with small talk. It can be painful sometimes, but it is the way to kind of break the ice and get to know people. Some really good advice that someone gave me is that when starting a new job, just go up to everyone and introduce yourself. At this stage, you don't know who's senior and who's not, so you don't know who to be intimidated by. You obviously shouldn't be intimidated by anyone and even senior people are just human and most people are open to having a nice chat at work. Next question, will you ever go on any business trips abroad? I think with remote working being a huge thing now and companies really well set up for video calls, the likelihood of business trips is a lot smaller. In the past two years, I've already worked with people from India, from the US, from Turkey, from Germany, and that's all been from the power of Microsoft Teams and screen sharing spreadsheets. In the future though, I would love to work abroad for a year or two. I should be able to do this with an actuarial qualification under my belt because there are insurance companies and consultancies in cities all over the world. And so there is pretty good potential for working abroad at some point, but not on a business trip, like actually being permanently based out there for a set period of time. Next question is, do you need to code a lot? Personally, I haven't done much coding in my work, but lots of my colleagues do. I primarily work with spreadsheets, very large dynamic spreadsheets, and also specialist company software that has a fairly intuitive user interface. I have used VBA a fair bit though, as we use quite a lot of macros to automate spreadsheets. Anyway, I think that is everything. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any follow-up questions or other questions that this video has sparked about being an actuary and young professional life, then please drop them in the comments section below. Give the video a like, subscribe to my channel, follow my Instagram, follow my LinkedIn, subscribe to my newsletter, and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.